So fasting is beneficial for just about everyone. I mean, the vast majority of people could benefit from fasting in in this modern age. But if some is good, does that mean that more is better? Well, sometimes yes, but not always. Um, Like a lot of things, fasting can have either diminishing returns or you can go too far and potentially cause a problem. So in this video, I'm going to explain some key questions to look at when deciding how much fasting to do, as well as some real life examples of what makes sense for some people on one end of the spectrum and other people on the other end of the spectrum. My name is Ben. I'm a PA and I share tips and strategies to help you improve your health through fasting, nutrition, and other healthy lifestyle changes. So how much fasting you do will depend, how much fasting you should do, will depend on your individual circumstances, your health circumstances and your body habitus and all that sort of thing. So the first key question is, how much extra body fat do you have? So how how obese are you? No offense, but how obese are you? How much extra body fat do you have? So you could be really obese and have a lot of extra body fat, And then it does make sense potentially to do a lot of fasting. Or if you're on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you're pretty lean, you know, relatively healthy, and you're just trying to get some of the other benefits that come from fasting other than just reducing body fat, then obviously you probably don't want to do as much fasting. So here's one of the things. Um, If you get into an extended fast, if you're fasting for a day or a few days or, or longer, then how much of your energy comes from fat depends on how much fat you have. So of course, when you fast, you know, body fat becomes the main energy source and some of it gets turned into ketones in your liver. And then that's the, becomes kind of the dominant energy source for your brain is the ketones. But in terms of how much of your total energy comes from body fat, it depends on how much fat you have. So the more body fat you have, the larger percentage of your energy needs come from body fat while you're fasting. So if you have tons of extra body fat, You can do a lot of fasting, use a lot of that fat for energy. If you don't have that much, then you wouldn't want to do as much because you're going to be using a little bit more percentage of your lean body mass, various protein sources, including but not limited to muscle would be, would enter in as part of the energy that's sustaining your blood sugar and and other things while you're fasting. So that's the first key question is how much extra body fat do you have? And that's the first key variable probably the biggest single variable that would kind of indicate how much fasting would make sense for you to do. Another question though, another key question is what are your goals? So there are other benefits of fasting besides just reducing body fat. For example, fasting is really beneficial for autoimmune conditions like Crohn's disease or multiple sclerosis or others. So extended fasting beyond about three or four days of water fasting can reduce autoimmune symptoms has been shown to re- reduce autoimmune symptoms. So if if you have one of those conditions and you're trying to improve the symptoms, then obviously you'd want to do some extended fasting. But if you're not really that overweight, you're kind of lean already, then you wouldn't want to do it constantly or for a really really long time, right? So you'd have to kind of keep it in in balance a little bit. And then during the times when you're not fasting, you'd want to make sure you eat lots of high quality protein, you know, to, and do some resistance training and make sure you maintain your lean mass and your strength that way. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into some real life examples about how much fasting makes sense to do. So the longest fast on record was somewhere around a little over a year, I believe, um, or right around one year the longest like recorded fast. So this was a guy who I'm just kind of paraphrasing because I I don't know all the exact numbers, but he maybe weighed about 500 pounds. And he, so he had a ton of extra body fat and then he did it under medical supervision. So it was mostly a water fast, but then he was taking in some stuff to kind of maintain his electrolytes and things. Um, and the doctors were testing that kind of stuff like his potassium level and his sodium level and, and different things like that. So he ended up going for about a year And he had all this extra body fat and he just kind of burned through it day after day after day. So that is kind of one far, far, far end of the spectrum because most of us don't weigh 500 pounds, right? If you you did, you could consider doing a very long water fast, ideally under medical supervision. Um, But let's bring it back a little bit more closer, (laughs) a little closer to home. That's just kind of to illustrate what, what it, you know, 
what the kind of extreme end of that spectrum looks like. Now, on episode 14 of my podcast, Megan Ramos came on and talked in detail about what they do over at the fasting method. She works with Dr. Jason Fung and Dr. Nadia Pataguana, who is also on my podcast later on. Um, and so they talked about, so they worked, uh, they work with a lot of patients who are obese and have type 2 diabetes and other health problems. And what they typically do is they have them do alternate day fasting. And what that means in practice is fasting about three days per week. So it'd be like, for example, if you chose Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as your three days, then you'd fast all day Monday, all day Wednesday, all day Friday. But you'd be feasting, eating high quality food until you're nice and full on the other four days of the week. So that's alternate day fasting, and that's what they do over there. And that's how they've gotten really incredible results. Um, like a lot of these people have had consistent fat loss, consistent weight loss, improved their blood sugar, improved other health measures, and ultimately put their type 2 diabetes in remission, basically. A lot of the people have. And, you know, it's a whole spectrum of how quickly it happens and this and that. It usually takes about six months, Megan explained back on that uh, episode 14 of the podcast. But that's, so that's pretty far towards that end of the spectrum of like doing a lot of fasting. If you did three days every week, that's quite a bit. But it's not as far as that one guy who did fasted for a year straight. So, <laughs> so if you if you kind of if you have if you're obese if you have type two diabetes, then you probably w- it probably would make sense. It would probably be beneficial to do quite a bit of fasting. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other end of the spectrum. So I listened to a podcast episode one time with Dr. Guido Cromer, who's I believe he's an, an Italian researcher. Um, and he was he's an expert on autophagy, so he's explaining all these details about autophagy. And then the host asked him about his approach to fasting. And if I remember correctly, what he said was that one time per year, he does a five-day water fast. He also does some, some degree of maybe like time-restricted eating or something, um, I think. But one time per year, he does a five-day water fast. And he is not overweight, so he's pretty thin. Um, but he still does a five-day water fast once a year because he wants the other health benefits that come from fasting besides just fat loss, um, like autophagy, because that's what he's an expert in. And autophagy, in case you didn't know, is that cellular spring cleaning. It kind of helps your body recycle a lot of old and worn-out proteins and things like that. So that's kind of the opposite end of the spectrum of someone who is pretty lean but wants other health benefits. Well, you would just wouldn't do it as often. So maybe like an extended fast once a year along with some other, you know, daily, you know, adjustments to your schedule, occasional time-restricted eating or or maybe more frequent time-restricted eating, but making sure you get lots of good quality protein and stuff to maintain your lean body mass. So let me give you one more uh, real-life example, and that's myself. So when I first started fasting, when I first started kind of incorporating it into my lifestyle. I was a little bit overweight, but not a ton. So I wasn't like super obese, but I did have a fair bit of extra body fat. So I started doing it. I started, basically I started doing some time-restricted eating and some occasional extended fasts um, a few years back. And so if by occasional, I mean like every few months, I would do like five days or a week or something like that. Yeah, every few months, give or take. Um, and so I started to, you know, get thinner, reduce body fat, all that good stuff. And then after quite a while, like, I, you know, I'd gotten thinner, but like I still had this little bit of like fat amount around my midsection, right? A little bit of belly fat. And it was kind of stubborn, you know, that stubborn belly fat that people often talk about. And so I was like, well, maybe I'll just try doing more fasting. And so I did, but that particular area of body fat just didn't want to go away, even with lots of fasting. So... I had to kind of take a step back and say, what else might be going on here? What's the deal? And then after a while, I realized that it wasn't just the fasting. That that wasn't the only health variable to look at. That I had to also think about, well, what about stress levels? What about my sleep quality? What about the type of food I'm eating? What can I adjust there? You know, and just and just kind of look at everything. In other words, like the big health variables that have the biggest impact. Fasting is a huge one. And nutrition is a huge one. And then there are some other ones that also have play a really big role in not only your health in general, but the distribution of body fat and how much body fat you have. So I mentioned stress and sleep, and those are really huge ones as well. So as I've learned more about that, I've able I've able to kind of I've been able to put that in perspective in a way where I can realize like, okay, it's not always just about doing more and more and more and more and more fasting forever. It, 
that is really powerful, but then you got to also kind of start adjusting some of those other dials, right? Tweaking some of those other variables, depending on your circumstances, how much progress you've already made, where you're starting from, and so on. So think about how much fasting might make sense for you. In episode 17 of my podcast, I explained several different types of fasting and kind of how to decide what makes the most sense for your situation. So I'll put a link to that below. And by the way, if you're kind of a beginner with fasting, I've got a playlist here that has a bunch of beginner fasting tips. Uh, Most of the videos are relatively short, so you can check that out as well. And if you're still listening to this around the holidays, I've got a video here that explains several tips for avoiding significant weight gain during the holidays. So go ahead and check that one out as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.